Okay, this is my third try trying to explain stinger transitions or how the new way found to do them. This is not even new, it's an old way, but anyway. All right, so I've been messing around a lot with the old video transitions, like the blur transition, or whatever, and then you also like add it or just dissolve. It does the same thing. It goes on the, the clip, usually at the beginning of the clip because that's where it has room, but it's supposed to go in between clips, but usually won't work when you're putting it on clips like this as uh, there's no extra room. The way that you need to, to fit, you fix this is by shortening this down a bit. You can just go like six frames back or something like that. I think we went like 12 before. You do this as well for the same amount. There you go. Now you have extra room and then you, then you can start putting your transition like that and then maybe something like that. And like that, that's nice. But the real power of this comes when we can actually edit the stinger transition itself. So you can see, as you can see, because we shortened it, this clip can bleed into where this bar is. So if we, we like extend this clip, right, you can see that little white line. That's the start of our composition. That's where the start of the video is. Even though we cut it because it's contained in the compound clip, that's where the start of the video is. And because the way this works is it needs that footage at the beginning so it could blend between them for this transition to see how that's using this clip when it's not even over here it's because we extended it over there so that's that that's how it works that's the good thing we can do is we can actually go into fusion into this cross dissolve so we just right click cross dissolve and then hit convert to fusion cross dissolve then it will make this i guess i'm gonna I'm call like a a stinger composition i, I like that, like that a stinger composition and we just open this up and you can see how exactly they made the cross dissolve it's just a dissolve node crazy but now that we can make our own uh you'll need to know how to use animators so i will i will go over how i did that but also you don't need to like you can if you just want to do it on this clip and you're not going to change you're not planning on changing the length or anything you can just use keyframes uh, to, to do whatever you want so what i want to do is a little wipe with little circle so let's get s ellipse let's render let's do that all right we can just this here add the effect mask and now it will show the second clip we just this one in, the, in there and then you know we could do things like this we just bring this all the way down and then go to the end you bring it all the way up and you have your transition like that nice little circle wipe but it won't work unless we use anim curves if we want to shorten this down or it will be repeatable. So I'm gonna do that with a little wipe. So it's just, in order to do anim curves on the old transform, you need to right click this, hit modify width, and then hit uh, XY path and go in the modifiers and this thing will pop up. I'm gonna uncheck these keyframes and then right click on the X and then modify with anim curves there and then change this to duration and then Oh, the curve. We're gonna change the curve to custom. I'm gonna make an S curve just like this. Put this over here. This over here. So everyone's a little confused when I do this, but so the offset is what the starting value will be. And since we're using a X X Y path, the starting value is zero, and that'll be over here. So you gotta want to start from the right side. We'll go like that, and bam, that's how you set your first one, and then it will travel and that one's going right because it's adding plus one to that we want it to not add the plus one we want it to actually minus plus one so we just you can do that and then as you can see the circle goes on the other side we play this back now now we have our transition like that now, that's how easy in is it's basically setting up the starter position and setting up the end position put those, with those values there and uh no this is not the whole, the whole screen so i'm just gonna scale it up like a little bit like that and there we go that's good and now we want this to actually wipe instead of doing what it's already doing now and i what i usually did before is use the trails node and just put it on here and so when when let's so restart that when it plays back it just covers the screen and then it also it's a mat for the new transition to appear but it doesn't do that it needs you need to like constantly restart it or like don't mess with it for it to work because then it just messes up a lot and i don't know why it won't few it won't cache in the edit page either so i thought i found a solution when i uh used the echo node it's actually from reactor and it does work but it's very 
it's very heavy on the uh, the PC. And plus, you need to do this thing where you need to make a pretty expression on this and make that equal the uh, time. There you go. So that's how that one works. And even then, if you have a really sharp spline, there might be little gaps, but this one's pretty smooth, so we lucked out. But there's, I guess, it's the final way I've settled upon is using a, a directional blur. So this is gonna be our source. We can put, hold all, like we can make that a little separate from what we're gonna do, which is we're gonna add a directional blur. And then we're going to do this. And then we're gonna, since we're going from right to left, we're gonna extend it to this side like this. And we're gonna turn the glow up to eight. We need to actually extend this length all the way to negative two. So it just goes across off the screen. You could probably do a little less, but just enough so it goes off the screen like that. And then we need to get, also you need to get rid of that little fringe. So I'm gonna add a bitmap. So like this, oh, let's connect that to the bitmap and then to the transform. Go to the bitmap and then crank this high all the way down. Not almost, almost all the way down. So it goes like that. And I want to balance it out in between here. So it's not too sharp either. You don't want too much, too sharp of a, of a mask. And so if we play this back though, we just, that's, we have our wipe now, or we should have our wipe. This is in the wrong input. There we go. Now it goes like that. And it, it cuts off because that's where the canvas cuts off at the transform. So we just gotta change the edges to duplicate. And there we go. Now we got something like that. I think we need to start it a little bit more off screen. So let's go into here. And let's ex not extend that one. Uh, extend this one. And then now it goes like this. All right, now we're looking good. And then the last thing I would do is I wanna put the shape in front. So it looks like the shape is wiping over it. Just add another merge and then connect that the original shape on top of it. So now, well, it's doing that, but you need to also control C the, the transform and control shift V and paste an instance of it. And now it'll have the exact same motion. And these two transforms will be linked, even if you change a parameter on there. And yeah, that is basically how you use stingers. Uh, two more things would be if you want to save this for later you could right click this and then go to create transition preset and then it will pop up in your user transitions on the effects library over here and then if you want to have this cache and you're not you're already in a play the uh your other cache is in user not in smart it's smart i think it already caches that you will have to go to your master settings uh your settings, master settings, and then go scroll all the way down to uh, optimize media render cache and then turn on auto key cache transitions in user mode. And that will that will do that and it'll be playback really nice and smooth. And before I leave I would like to thank you for the person that told me about that. Which is actually he's live in there right now. What up Lucky? He's the uh the guy that helped me uh, figure that out. So shout out to him. And yeah, I guess that's my little test tut on how to do singers.